Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Professor Blackmore, and today I want to talk to you about further developments surrounding the Alec Baldwin shooting on the set of the movie Rust in Santa Fe, New Mexico, because this week the sheriff has released video taken during its investigation of the crime scene soon after and during the minutes and hours immediately following the moment when the director of photography, Helena Hutchins, was killed and director Joel Souza was injured when Alec Baldwin fired a gun on the movie set causing a live bullet projectile to strike Helena Hutchins and to exit her body, entering the body of the director, Joel Souza, causing him to sustain gunshot injuries. So here are some of the videos that were released. Well, I, I know your name, so <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, uh, um, see you back, okay? Let me get with my lieutenant and see, see where we want right, you to Mr. where we want you to hang out, okay? I have to, I, whatever you want to do. Whatever. Yes, sir. All right, give me just a second. She said to be an empty gun. If you only with the loads, we were ready to shoot. You already was prepped. Yeah. Earplugs, everything. You want water or something yep. now? I want to find props to get a cigarette from you. I got one. They're going. What do you got? I got medium. Armor. Take it. Uh, as of right now, her, 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 her status is questionable. That's why we called the air, air light. We cleared, they cleared the gun outside after his request, and I witnessed them clear it and saw the bullets. Okay. So the one was the one that was missing. The one that fired, we don't know, but all the other ones were proper. Um, but they had loads. They were, yeah, they were port load blanks. They had loads of them. Well, they didn't know. They didn't do their shake pass before they put the button on the load. Right, but see, what we're rehearsing, you give me the empty gun. We don't need to be able to load, so that's fine until we're ready to shoot. So we put the earplugs in. See, they're, they're trying to stabilize their vital signs enough for the, the flight sure. and administer any kind of nar uh, narcotics or anything they need, blood thinners, that may be. Then they'll load her up in the, in the helicopter and they'll fly her there. I believe the other ambulance is on the other side. Um, and he seems to be doing better than she was, so Absolutely. they might drive him in an ambulance. Yeah. I heard him wave off the other guy, so. Hey. I'm at the police station. The sheriff's in there about to interview me. Um, how is everyone home? How are the kids? The kids are great. The kids are great. Did you Tell Carmen what's going on? No. Okay. Um, are you convinced you don't want to come tomorrow? I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. Look, look, after you talk to the sheriff, but like, I don't know. Okay. Insurance investigators, this is really. I'm going to talk to you more. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry, you must have such, like, you must be so traumatic. No, 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 what I am is someone who I don't want to do this stuff anymore. I don't want to be a public person. And I'm the one holding the gun in my hand. And one thing I want to stop right now to say to people is that you have a Fifth Amendment right guaranteed by the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution to remain silent and a Sixth Amendment right to an attorney before you make any statements. So you need to be aware that anything you say to anyone or anything you think you're saying in a moment of privacy is being recorded. So as you can see here, Alec Baldwin clearly thought he was in a moment of privacy. Otherwise, he would have not been speaking to his wife on speakerphone in such a manner, causing anything that she's now saying to be now also recorded. So you want to remember that. And so the question that's on the minds of everyone is what does this release of information mean? Why were these videotape recordings released if the investigation has not yet been concluded? Does it mean that Alec Baldwin needs to get ready for a criminal indictment? And I'll tell you right off the bat that in my opinion, I think it means that while there's plenty of evidence pointing to the fact that a lot of people, including Alec Baldwin, did a lot of things that may look like crimes to the sheriff, people like the DA 
who are trained to apply the actual facts of the case to the elements of the law know that these facts just do not matriculate into a crime that can be proved beyond a reasonable doubt because Alec Baldwin did not have what we call a requisite culpable mental state needed to prove that he intentionally, recklessly, or criminally negligently caused the death of Helena Hutchins when he fired the gun. Now, I think the DA has probably made this finding and has advised Alec Baldwin's attorneys of this off the record. I think there's strife between the sheriff's office and the DA's office, possibly. But it is the DA who would have to actually prove this case in a court of law, not the sheriff. Now, over the past few days, I've heard people ask, why is the criminal investigation taking so long? I've also heard all kinds of different conversations surrounding a whole host of wholly non-dispositive issues, in my opinion, like whether Alec Baldwin had his finger on the trigger or not, or whether Alec Baldwin pulled the trigger or not, or whether Alec Baldwin checked the gun prior to handling it. And now before I give my opinion on this issue, I want to show you some of the videos that the sheriff also released of Alec Baldwin practicing with the gun. So now, in my opinion, I don't see how Alec Baldwin can say that his finger never touched the trigger or that he didn't pull the trigger. And quite frankly, he better be glad he didn't kill himself. But while these questions about the trigger and whether Alec Baldwin checked the gun are very important questions, I do admit they're wholly non-dispositive distractions at this point in determining if criminal charges can be brought against Alec Baldwin or anyone else, because the primary number one question is, did he knowingly cause live ammunition to be brought onto the movie production scene and or did he knowingly cause live ammo to be placed into the gun? And I think we all know the answer to this question is categorically no. You see, the answer to this question goes straight to the issue of determining whether the DA can establish that Alec Baldwin had the culpable or the requisite culpable mental state required to prove each element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. And that is because a movie set is not the same as real life where you're acting in a make-believe setting. If someone handed a gun to Alec Baldwin in any other setting, I guarantee you charges would have been filed against him by now. But we have a wholly different set of facts here. We're working in an environment where everybody was acting under the belief that there were no live rounds nowhere on the set, much less in the gun. So all of the people opining that he should have checked the gun are right, but it doesn't resolve the legal problem of whether the act is criminal. Yes, Alec Baldwin is negligent as it relates to civil liability, but if criminal charges will be brought in this case, it will be against a person who had the responsibility of providing the ammunition to the movie production company. And you would have to apply the same principles even to that person 
regarding the requisite culpable mental state. And in my opinion, the only thing that provides any sort of clarity thus far on that issue is a lawsuit filed by the armorer against the individual and the company that provided the ammo. Now, in my prior video, I lay out at least seven eye-raising facts revealed in the armorer's lawsuit. And I hope you'll review my prior video on this topic. But one of the things I found interesting was the report of the use of what is called Starline Brass Ammo. Now, apparently, Starline Brass is a company that produces ammo brass casings that can be made into dummy, blank, or live ammunition by anyone with the knowledge and equipment to do so. In other words, Potentially, a person can take previously live ammo in these casings and convert them into dummy or blank rounds and presumably vice versa. Now, a person by the name of Seth Kinney and his company, PDQ Arm and Prop, provided ammo that was used on the set. Now, it still remains to be seen if all of the ammo on the set came from PDQ but we can draw three interesting inferences from the detailed facts laid out in the armorer's lawsuit. Number one, most of the ammo supplied to the set came from Seth Kinney and PDQ. Number two, Seth Kinney used Starline brass ammo. And number three, the round that killed Helena Hutchins was from a Starline brass ammo casing. So much is being made about the fact that the armorer should have been able to recognize dummy rounds from live rounds. But in my opinion, if you have someone using their own equipment to convert previously live rounds into dummy rounds and or blank rounds and vice versa, we can't say for certain what the rounds would have looked like, felt like, sounded like, or anything about them at this particular point in time because we just don't have those facts. We have not seen the rounds. We don't have any evidence about the rounds. We on the outside who are not inside of the investigation simply don't know all of the facts. We don't have enough facts to be able to say for sure anything about the look, makeup, feel, sound, or anything else about the ammo in question. And so the issue of whether the armorer should have known whether it was live ammo or not, may not be as clear cut as everybody thinks it should be. This is still a fact that still remains to be wide open. But if this was a practice that was being carried out by the supplier of the ammunition, in my opinion, it is something that should have been made known to the movie production team. And the facts so far sustain that this information was never known, everybody on the set, was expecting that the set would not have any live ammo on it at all. So this is gonna be a critical fact since the casing was the same as was known to be used by Seth Kinney and PDQ and the same type that caused the fatal shooting. Now, another eye-raising fact revealed in the armorer's lawsuit was that immediately after the gun was fired, during the time period before law enforcement officials arrived, the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, claims that she asked the prop manager to check the rounds to see if there were other live rounds in the box where she got the ammo that she, the armorer, loaded into the gun. And the facts allege that Sarah, the prop manager, confirmed that there were other live rounds in the box of so-called dummy rounds. And even more eye-raising, law enforcement officials confirm that there were in fact another seven live rounds in the box of so-called dummy rounds. So until you get clarity on these points of interest, you can't conclusively establish anything about Alec Baldwin's criminal culpability in this case. If you have a person who took on the liability of doing something as important as making dummy rounds by maybe allegedly repurposing live rounds 
and he does not advise his customer of this fact and or that he has an operation wherein he could mistakenly mix up live rounds in a box with dummy rounds? Now, you're getting in the neighborhood of reckless behavior there of anyone involved in such a practice. But as I've said in my prior videos, this is still all on the level of civil liability as it relates to Alec Baldwin. And if the case file by Helena Hutchins' husband against Alec Baldwin and the movie production company makes it in front of a jury, there is no way that the production company and or Alec Baldwin would not be found to have civil liability. But you need a higher level of culpability and I believe this even if Alec Baldwin is found to have had his finger on the trigger because this is a movie set where everybody thought that they were working with a gun. Although real, everybody thought that the only rounds used in the gun and on the set were dummy rounds or blanks. And so we have a scenario where somebody handed a gun to Alec Baldwin and the person handing the gun to him declared that it was safe. And then, according to Alec Baldwin, and although the armor states that she would have advised him otherwise if she had been there to hand him the gun, the deceased individual actually instructed Alec Baldwin to point the gun in the direction of a place on the set where she and other workers were standing. So this is what has taken so long. This is not as simple as everybody wants to make it out to be. I think the sheriff released the video recordings because the DA is probably not going to be pressing charges against Alec Baldwin and they just wanted to make him suffer a little bit longer before actually releasing their findings to the public. And so we'll have to see how this all shakes out. There are still a lot of logistical, jurisdictional, and plain legal complications here. But what do you think? Do you think the release of these video recordings by the sheriff spells trouble for Alec Baldwin? Please leave your comments in the comment section of this video. And please also give me a big thumbs up. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos. And please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram.